All right, everybody, buckle up because today we are diving into some seriously futuristic stuff, like seriously. Meta, you know, Facebook, Instagram, they're making some big moves in the AI world. Big for sure. I mean, remember when we used to just like type things into our phones? Yeah. Feels like ancient history now. It does, doesn't it? Things are changing so fast. And the meta is basically saying typing is so last year, get ready to actually talk to your apps. Exactly. They want a much more intuitive, almost human relationship between us and our devices. So we're not just talking like texting with emojis now. We're talking full on conversations with our apps, Facebook, Instagram, the whole shebang. Yep. And this new AI they're using, Llama 3.2. It's their secret sauce to make it all happen. Okay, so I've heard of Llama 3.2, but to be honest, I'm a little fuzzy on the details. Well, think of it like Meta's answer to Google's Lamb DA, except it's got this big focus on, like, actually working seamlessly with all those apps we use every single day. Billions of us. Okay, that makes sense. So it's not just Meta playing catch-up. They're actually leveraging the fact that they already have this massive user base. Right. And the other thing is, it's not just one thing. It's this whole multimodal system. Yeah. Which I know sounds very jargony. Yeah, a little bit. But it's actually really cool. Basically, it means this AI can handle way more than just text. It understands your voice. It can even interpret images. And it puts it all together. Okay, hold on. Back up a sec. Can you give me, like, a real-world example of what this multimodal thing actually enables? How would I actually experience that? Okay, so picture this. <laughs> You're scrolling through, like, a bunch of your vacation photos. Love it. Yeah. Keep going. Instead of messing around with, you know, editing software or whatever, you just tell Instagram out loud, like, make a video with these, put some beachy music behind it. And then it just, like, magically happens. Pretty much. Yeah. Because it's not just processing your words. It's actually looking at those images, remembering your past preferences on Instagram, and understanding exactly what you want. Whoa. So it's kind of like having a personal assistant, but they're also, like, a tech whiz and they live in your phone. Exactly. Meta wants this AI to be less of a tool we just use sometimes and more like i don't know a constant companion always learning how we operate and what we like okay that's kind of wild when you think about it it's definitely a different way of interacting with technology and it plays right into their big metaverse ambitions all right let's talk metaverse for a sec i feel like some people are still trying to wrap their heads around what it even is how does this ai fit into that whole thing okay so imagine you're hanging out with friends in a virtual world okay i'm picturing it You'd want your avatar to move naturally when you speak, oh. right? Or be able to, like, ask for directions without having to type everything out. Right. That makes sense. This AI, it's about making all those interactions in the metaverse feel less clunky, less like a video game. So it's about making that digital experience feel as natural as, like, talking to you right now. Exactly. And that's key to Meta's vision of the metaverse. They're not just betting on VR headsets. They're bringing the metaverse to you through your phone by making that phone almost human. Wow, okay, so they're making some seriously bold moves. They are, but the question is, does this make us want to spend even more time glued to our phones, living in these digital spaces? Right, because on the one hand, it sounds kind of amazing, like sign me up, but then there's this other part of me that's a little, I don't know, wary? Like, are we giving our devices too much control? Yeah, I hear you. That's a valid concern, and it's something we should definitely dig into a little deeper. I mean, we've all seen those sci-fi movies, right? The ones where the machines take over. <laughs> right. Maybe I'm being paranoid. But is it just me, or are we getting kind of close to that? It's a common fear, for sure. And it's not totally coming out of left field. Right. But instead of, like, spiraling into a sci-fi black hole, let's talk about real concern. Jobs. Okay, yeah. The robots are taking our jobs. We've all heard it a million times. But are we actually at that point now? Like, is this AI stuff really going to put people out of work? So it's not like robots are going to walk in tomorrow and, and take everyone's jobs. It's it's a bit more uh, nuanced than that. Okay. Think about it like this. AI is really good at those tasks, those specific tasks. They're, you know, kind of repetitive, predictable. Things like that. So like factory work, data entry, stuff like that. Exactly. And those areas are already seeing, you know, automation happening. But now with AI getting this sophisticated, even some of those white collar jobs, the ones that involve a lot of, I don't know, data trenching, analyzing, you know, those could be impacted too. Okay. So that's a lot of people. What happens to them? That is the million dollar question. And it's something that honestly, everyone needs to be thinking about. Like seriously, policymakers, educators, businesses. Yeah. We've got to figure this out. 
retraining is going to be huge Less training yeah like how do we give people the skills they need for this new job market this you know ai driven job market Ugh. we need to be ready for that it's like we have to keep learning keep adapting just as fast as the ai itself that's it exactly yeah. lifelong learning it's not just a buzzword anymore it's essential uh -huh. and it's not just tech skills either we're talking creativity mm -hmm. critical thinking yeah you know emotional intelligence oh so like the human stuff exactly those are going to be even more important as ai takes over all that routine stuff yeah because those are the things that you know ai can't replicate okay i like that so it's not all doom and gloom if we can adapt this ai thing could actually be good an opportunity even absolutely think about it what if ai took care of all the boring stuff yeah all the stuff we don't want to do then we'd be free to focus on the things that really matter yeah that would be pretty amazing it's not about us versus the machines it's about like finding ways to work together yeah humans an ai a team i like the sound of that but even if we do that, even if we master that whole working with AI thing, there's still that question of control. You're right. How much control are we giving up? It's important. Like, are we really in control when our phone is, I don't know, learning all our habits? Yeah. Knowing what we want before we even know what we want. Yeah. And maybe even kind of nudging us in certain directions and we don't even realize it's happening. Okay. Yeah. That's getting into some, I don't know. Tricky territory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tricky for sure. It's almost like, I don't know, is our phone even really ours anymore when it knows us that well? It's a valid question. Mm -hmm. It really blurs the lines, doesn't it? And it's easy to see how things could go sideways. Like imagine you're scrolling through Facebook, right? Okay, yeah. And this AI starts showing you all these posts that it knows you'll love. But, and here's the thing, what if those posts, you know, are playing into your biases? Oh, okay. So instead of being exposed to all sides of a story, like different perspectives, yeah. I'm stuck in this echo chamber. Exactly. An echo chamber built just for you, curated yeah. by this, this algorithm that thinks it knows you better than you know yourself. And it probably does know me better than I know myself. Let's be real. Okay. But it's not just about like the information we see, right? It's also about all the stuff we're giving to these systems. Every time we like something, comment on something, post a photo, it's like we're painting the super detailed picture of ourselves, you know, with data. The digital portrait. Yeah, exactly. And that data, that's valuable, like really valuable. Oh, yeah. It's gold. Companies can use that to target us with ads. Right. Ads, experiences, they can practically predict our next move. And they do. So the big question is, how comfortable are we? with that, with that level of, I don't know, data collection, mm. analysis? Is there enough being done to make sure our privacy is actually protected? See, this is what I'm saying. It's a lot. It is, yeah. Like, we need a whole other deep dive just to scratch the surface of data privacy. Honestly, yeah, probably. But let's get back to your earlier point. That whole, are we giving up too much control thing? Yeah. It's like I said, there are no easy answers with this AI stuff. It's complicated. But just having the conversation is a good first step. Right. Because at least now we're aware of it. Exactly. Awareness is key. Once we understand the risks, then we can start demanding better from tech companies, from the people making the rules, and even from ourselves. Yeah. We can't just be like passive consumers swept along with the tide, right? Exactly. We got to be informed users, engaged users. So as AI evolves, we have to evolve with it, right? 100%. And that might mean setting some boundaries, questioning things we normally just accept. Taking a break from the digital world sometimes. Remember what it's like to just like exist. All of that, yeah. It's funny, you know, we started this whole deep dive talking about meta and their AI. Like it was this big, crazy future thing. But the more we talk about it, the more I realize it's not really about the tech itself, you know? It's about us. It's about us. Like, how are we going to live with this stuff? What kind of future are we going to make with it? Couldn't say it better myself. What? It's not like the future of AI is already decided. It's being written right now by all of us. And on that note, we're going to leave you with this. As you're out there in the world, you know, navigating this whole AI thing, stay curious, stay critical, but most importantly, stay engaged. Because the future belongs to the people who shape it. That's it. That's the truth. Yeah. Until next time, everyone, keep asking those questions and keep diving deep.